Hi, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking to you about Mission Possible, moving your most sensitive data to GCP. My name is Christopher Johnson. I typically go by CJ. I'm a security product manager. I look after compliance, regulated data, and what we're talking to you today about assured workloads for government. I have with me Suzanne. Hi, everyone. Great to see everyone. I'm Suzanne Gao. I'm a managing director at Deloitte. I oversee our global export controls practice and focusing on regulations related to export controls as well as sanctions and working with CJ today on this fantastic presentation. So looking forward to it. All right. Well, at the very base of this, we want to talk about the challenge of compliance in cloud. Uh, compliance, what we've learned over the last couple of years is a lot of the regulations, a lot of the compliance regimes that we look after weren't written with, the, uh, with cloud computing in mind. And a lot of them reflect uh, requirements that come from previous world of having everything in a single data center or in a single room. And our customers require something a little bit more complicated than that. However, as we move to this, managing compliance with uh, multiple data security regulations in a cloud environment can be really complex and slow, especially for government agencies. And this is what we've really been thinking about and trying to imagine solutions for this. It gets extra complicated when you have workloads that have to comply with multiple different compliance and export regulations. I'll let Suzanne talk a little bit more about the cloud compliance landscape. Thanks, CJ. So talking about the cloud compliance landscape, when it comes to sensitive data and moving to the cloud environment, there are a lot of regulations that you have to consider. Amongst them is export controls as well as cybersecurity. And what those really regulate are who can have access, what can be uploaded to the cloud, and then how can it be accessed. So thinking about that, export controls is, can be quite stringent when it comes to sensitive data or controlled data. And so as you can see, it restricts the unauthorized transfer of technology and data to non-US persons from an export controls perspective. So there are a lot of different mechanisms that a company can employ to make sure that it's in compliance with these regulations. And one of them is leading, one of the leading practices is marking that data as controlled or not controlled. And because of the fact that export control regulations are so stringent, a lot of other regulations can piggyback off the various different compliance requirements. So for instance, when it comes to cybersecurity regulations, which govern the confidential unclassified information and in other instances, classified information, being able to employ a program that where you're already marking the data can also capture some of the cybersecurity requirements as well. Um, but certainly there are some times that there are conflicts with these regulations. So for instance, in certain jurisdictions around the world, there is a lot around data privacy and with respect to nationality. So if you're thinking about from an export controls perspective where you need to identify who the non-US persons are, there are considerations that you have to sort of resolve when it comes to sharing that kind of personal information in order to be in compliance with the export controls. And there are different mechanisms that you need to think about when you're trying to determine who, what, and how. And some of those are through performing such things as screening, where you identify certain parties that you can or cannot do business with. Licensing, which really means is about, should you need to have provide access to a non-US person from that perspective, there are licensing mechanisms that you can actually ask the government for permission to do so. And then also visitor management. So in the instances that you have a physical facility where you're needing to um, look at whether it's the physical parameters of the building or the server rooms or whatever it might be, there are other protocols around that to control who and who, who doesn't have access to those types of um, physical locations. And that relates also to access control. And that is from a virtual perspective, it's such in the cloud environment where it's, it's, it's um, technology or is a physical access. And then with, with respect to disclosures, um, just like in cybersecurity, if there are instances of non-compliance, there are ways in which you can actually disclose those types of incidents to the government um, and to resolve those sort of situations. But as you can see, it's quite complex and there are a lot of different considerations that come into play um, when it comes to compliance and moving to a cloud environment. However, should you have the right protocols in place and of course the right tools in place to make sure that you do monitor the who, how, and what of the data and the access of that data and the controls of that data, then it creates a smooth transition for such a, for such a platform. 
Migrating government data to the cloud is challenging. Um, and there's a few key questions that must be answered before you get started. And really, cloud users need to be confident of their answers before they can start the migration. And pretty soon we'll get to the, uh, the solutions to these problems. But for now, let's understand a little bit more about what it takes. You have to really understand what information will be stored or accessed in uh, the cloud environment. As Suzanne mentioned, that goes back to one of the fundamental uh, pieces of this is understanding your information and tagging it appropriately. The next is where will that information ultimately reside? Um, that could be on-prem in a server, that could be in the cloud environment, but it also is really important in terms of choosing which regions, which cloud regions your data is stored in. We'll talk here in a few, minute, a few more minutes about that. And then we also need to understand what the process is to grant and manage access to that information. What are the controls that are in place? Some of those you get to inherit from the cloud provider and some of those you need to manage yourself in terms of looking after the data, making sure you have the right controls in place. That of course feeds directly into the next question, which is who can access that data? So we put this great access control around it. Now you need to make sure you're controlling the people that have access to the information appropriately. Do they have the right attributes to access the data in the first place? Do they have the right background checks? These are really important considerations that feed into the question of who can access that data. The next question to answer here is what is the process to add content to the application system or platform? So we've spun up our environment, we've put all these awesome access controls in place, we have the right people, and we need to understand what it takes to move data in and potentially out of the platform or out of the environment once you have things configured and working. The next one is what the encryption protocols are and how keys are managed. This one's actually pretty exciting and one of the areas that we really try to help our customers out with in Google Cloud. And if you're talking about US government data, it has to be FIPS 140-2 validated cryptography. And it's really important that you have that in place and you have good controls around the cryptography that's used. But you also have to have a lot of options in terms of manage the encryption keys. And in you know, the Google Cloud environment, you have a lot of choices with customer managed encryption capabilities. And uh, all of those, of course, being FIPS 140-2 validated uh, and turned on by default. And then finally, how and where are the data backups being stored? Where's this information being stored and processed? This is also a key consideration. And you know, some of it is baked into the environment directly, but in other cases, you need to make sure that you're managing this yourself. And I just wanted to add to um, some of the points that CJ raised, and I think these are really critical questions when you're thinking about migrating to a government, uh, government data to a cloud platform is that you, know, you can see that it really is about multiple responsibilities and multiple responsibility owners where you know, thinking about what information is going to be stored, where the information is going to be, how is it going to be accessed, and so forth. And so even thinking about our relationship, you know, Deloitte's relationship with um, Google and working with CJ's team, that's really been a collaboration and being able to identify and having those answers very clearly laid out uh, for these various different questions that will inevitably create that pathway and that journey to being able to do that migration very smoothly. So now we get to make the transition to my favorite part here, which is, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the complexity and challenges and the things that Google and Deloitte are doing to make this easier and try to help our customers through the migration and bringing their most valuable information to the cloud provider. So we have a new product called Assured Workloads for Government, and this is our solution to the problem. The idea is you're going to secure your sensitive workloads and accelerate your path to running compliant workloads on Google Cloud. We're going to talk a lot more about what that means and how we're going about that. So Assured Workloads, what is this product? Uh, basically, this product allows you to confidently secure and configure those sensitive workloads in alignment with the government requirements and regulations in just a few clicks. You get to choose your compliance security settings, and we're going to put the necessary cloud controls in place. It doesn't mean you're off the hook. You do have a shared responsibility here. As both Suzanne and I mentioned, it's really important to make sure that that data is managed and controlled correctly. But on our side, on the Google Cloud side, we're making it, uh, we're streamlining that process to configure the environment, make sure it's set up appropriately for those compliance outcomes and getting you started on the path towards compliance. How does this work? Well, for starters, you log in and start using Assured Workloads. Uh, this is available from the Google Cloud Console, which we'll show you here in a few minutes, and you access the Assured Workloads interface. This is optimized for customers in regulated industries, 
And it's as simple as uh, using this new workload button. We've, we're using this workload concept to put, these, put this information together. You set up your new workload. This is where you configure your platform controls for data location, administrative access, and encryption. Again, back to what we were talking about earlier, these are those fundamental questions you have to answer before you start moving government data to Google Cloud. You have to understand where your data is going to be stored and processed, who can access that information, and make sure that the appropriate encryption is in place. And then finally, monitor your project details. So make sure that the environment is set up appropriately and that you're keeping track of that environment over time. And we help you with that with the Assured Workloads product. So we'll talk through a little bit of the use case here. I'll let Suzanne describe the use case. Sure. So a, a, a typical scenario that we really see that I think really captures why something like a cool tool like this would be really useful is, for instance, an aerospace and defense client. So if you have an aerospace and defense client, if you're familiar with export controls, a lot of their data is export controlled. And also from a government perspective, you know the, that's sort of the key thing. And so when you're looking at the aerospace and defense where they have very controlled information, they're gonna be subject to a lot of different uh, regulatory requirements when it comes to that type of data that might potentially be shared with other entities outside of its organization or even within its own organization. So the scenario is, is the client is already using um, a cloud platform and it acquires, which often many aerospace and defense companies do, they, they buy up a lot of smaller companies and incorporate them into their IT environment. But of course, with a smaller company that might be less sophisticated, um, there may be some risk around the identification of what's controlled or not controlled on their on-prem data that's being stored. And so they would need to then go through the, the exercise of understanding what that data is. And as I mentioned before, potentially having to market to understand what's controlled and not controlled. But the client wants to move quickly to and migrate the, the acquisition data into the cloud and also make sure it's showing compliance with the various different export control regulations as well as cybersecurity regulations and so forth. And so the acquired company's data is export controlled. So then the situation is how do they do that quick migration into the cloud that's already being used by the parent company? So then with that, CJ, do you want us to talk about the setup? Yeah. So we're going to step you through this and show you a demo of this. And we're going to show you an aerospace user that's going to create a new workload with multiple regulatory compliance requirements for the data. We're going to talk about storing processing that data in the cloud and requiring, for example, customer managed encryption, US data location, and US persons controls in, in terms of support of that data. So let's show you the demo. We're going to come into Cloud Console. And for starters, we'll come over to the menu. You can see we have a new compliance area. We're going to click in there, and this is going to take you directly into Assured Workloads. In this case, we can create a new workload and view the ones that we've created. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one here today. Let's fire this up. We'll call this Next Demo. And we're going to tie it to a billing account. Next, you're going to choose the platform controls that you'd like, apply, like to apply to the workload. In this case, we've got IL-4 and C just turned on. IL-4 allows us to create a workload that's compatible with IL-4 controls. Specifically, it's going to limit Googler access, so Google support access to only US persons. We also have CGIS options. CGIS does something very similar, but it also enables support for escorted access uh, to support use cases. We're going to use IL-4 today. What happens next is the regions that are available to me are limited based on the compliance framework that we've chosen. In this case, IL-4 only supports US regions or US regionality of data, so only re US regions are available to me. I'm going to choose US Central 1, and now I can see which GCP services are available. This will limit the capability to the services that are compatible with these controls, both for regionality and personnel access controls. We're going to click Next. Then we're going to configure the encryption. We'll start this thing up today, set the rotation period, um, and then click Next. We'll review the workload. What you can see here is we've worked very hard to make this a, a extremely streamlined experience for creating a new workload, putting the controls in place, and getting you ready to onboard data into GCP. I'm going to create the workload. What's going to happen here, as I mentioned, in the platform, we're going to create the project. Uh, both for the Assured Workload as well as for CMAC. So we have some separation of duties there. 
and we're going to put the backend infrastructure and controls in place to protect the data in a compliant fashion. We can go in here and get some details on the project. It's going to give us the platform controls that were applied. It'll show us the controls specifically that were applied in this case, which are data access controls and data residency. We can see the region that was chosen, obviously the creation time, and then the projects themselves. Like I said, it'll create one for CMAC, it'll create one for the assured workload, and it'll show you the services that are in scope for that particular workload. We, of course, can launch into the project, and at this point, I can begin onboarding data into the platform in a compliant fashion, creating VMs, creating workloads, and really starting to take advantage of the platform in a compliant fashion. As you can see from the demo, we worked really hard to make this process as streamlined and as efficient as possible for creating a new compliant workload. And what we've done there is we've put those guardrails around your environment and your infrastructure to make sure that you can have those compliance outcomes in the end. And ultimately, the product features that we're talking about and demonstrating here is the automatic enforcement of those data location uh, constrictions. So in the case of the US government, uh, compliance requirements, these have to be stored at rest in specific U.S. regions. What we're able to do with this product is help you configure that so that it'll only be stored at rest in these U.S. regions and also make sure that your users of your environment don't accidentally store it somewhere that they're not supposed to. So we're compliant from the beginning, and then we help you put those guardrails in place to prevent misconfiguration errors that could result in a non-compliant non configuration. So that's the first part of it, which is the automatic enforcement of that data location. The next part is personnel access. This one's actually very interesting. What we're able to do is limit Google personnel access based upon predefined attributes such as citizenship, a particular geographic location, um, or potentially background checks. So for example, uh, the support for CGIS uh, allows us to have um, controls in place that make sure that it's a US person accessing from a US location with a very specific background check in place, or they're escorted by somebody that is. Finally, uh, the built-in security controls here. This reduces the risk of accidental misconfiguration by choosing the available platform security configurations. We'll help you put those controls in place. Again, the idea here is start from a compliance beginning uh, and then help you keep that in place as you move through the life cycle of your data on GCP. Automatic enforcement of product deployment location. Uh, this allows you to restrict the deployment of new resources to specific Google Cloud regions based upon an organizational policy. Next, the security and compliance monitoring. We're working on this now, it's coming in Q4, and this will allow you to continuously monitor the security and compliance of your assured workload environment and adjust those settings as needed based upon your own security and risk assessment. There's also a premium support offering here for assured workload customers. This allows you to ensure that only US person support from US locations are available 24 by seven to help meet compliance requirements. And this does require additional support services purchase though. So the premium support offering is, uh, is quite interesting. Thank you so much for your time today. It was a blast getting to introduce uh, Assured Workloads for Government. We're really excited about it. And thank you so much for your time. Suzanne, thank you so much for helping us out with this. Oh, it's, it's been great. And it's been a fun time. And it's been a great journey. So I really appreciate the, the being able to participate today.